Um, this is my review on The Punisher from 2004, the extended cut of the film, exclusive release to DVD, not yet gone a blue release, and the theatrical cut. Uh, that pretty much everyone knows about that cut of the film, so... Uh, there are minor differences in the extended cut. Um, not that much difference. Both cuts of the film got an R rating, rated rating for some reason. Because I don't know. This is this is one of the films that made me question if the ratings, if there's a, even a point. To rating, giving a rating to movies, like, you know, rating the actual movies R and PG, giving, uh, why, like, this is one of the films that made me question it, because to this day, I'm not really sure why this is an R-rated movie, because it's pretty tone, and the tone is pretty light-hearted, M majority of the time when it comes to the violence, and Killing up until the third act point of the movie, like which is like the last 15 minutes of the film. The rest of the film is this. I mean, I don't see why this movie couldn't be PG 13 because if you see really like what, what, what to early 2000 back in 2004 point, uh, how really, uh, what kind of the. PG-13 movies were being made like. They were kind of being made like this in terms of tone and, and style. Throughout the majority of the movie. And the R movies, well, had a much more different tone and different types of action. That were more gratuitous and uh, more extreme. Because to the extreme level of violence, you know. And it was, well, what could be cartoony and a little campy at times and lighthearted. It never, like, really lost the like, idea of, you know, or self-aware that it's supposed to get out of your film. So they really would go, still go over the top with the violence. And make it more extreme than what happened in real life, you know? Or in a PG-13 writing. Even. But it would be more extreme than we would see in PG-13 in the 2000s. So... Yeah, and I know, I know, other people was like want to make like, want to make like want to defend this movie. Well, this is a, clearly a justification because people die in this movie. Yeah, people die in Spider Man movie. That was Ray PG thirteen. Many many people got blown up with grenades, even though it's called a pumpkin bomb. But guess what? They both explode in both types of explosives. So I don't think it really matters. And others saw showed children's gangs caught in buildings as when rescuing them, only to then only to relate to reveal the Spanish gang ambush and get, get stabbed and cut. With one of like with one of his dagger pumpkin bomb things that the goblin had and uh and uh my favorite death was when the you know well, P is after the events of P are really beating the goblin half to death. He actually steadily decapitates him, the case Shishikabob themselves in half with his own glider for his trying because he's forgot that Spider has or didn't know Spider has fighter sense and can dodge any attack for some reason. Which I was always kind of strange because he knew know so much about the wall crawler, him as fighting, also him as Peter Parker. Besides knowing that they were two same person, what the desires and powers are, yeah, I just think he would have known this that he has spider sense and could block whatever attack you hit. Try to hit him at, and at least maybe he thought there was something off with it because for some reason. And the third act, he seems to have trouble with spider sense. Until he gets the drop on Goblin Beast him to death, so... 
Yeah, um, that is a much more violent movie than the Punisher movie called The Punisher that is about Marvel's The Punisher. Yes, that is a more serious and darker and gruesome movie throughout the entire act structure whenever there's action going on than the old, than this version of The Punisher, which I'm just going to say, he sucks. <laughs> He sucks because he doesn't even resemble the Punisher outside of the name and what he wears for the comics. Now I can only hear the people disagreeing with me, saying that he kills people. That's all he needs. To do. That's all he needs to do. He's a puncher. That's all he needs to do. I agree with you. That's all the puncher needs to do. But he doesn't do that until the last fifteen minutes. Now does he? Now, if you say planning ahead and manipulating people and getting them to kill them each other to take out this to take out this so you can kill the main bad guy and the last few henchmen left of the of the evil gang, that's not really uh, being a punisher. Now that's mostly being a manipulative fuck. When you really think about him. Uh, a bit of a weasel, if you will. Yeah, the puncher doesn't come off as the across as the puncher, as he more comes across as like someone weaseling his way to get what he wants. After his family got a entire family and what it got murdered right in front of him. Max style, man, Max style. What do I mean by that? Well, instead of, you know, using the comic book of, of the style of what was used in the comics to show how his family was killed or taking inspiration that, they decided to shoot it and take inspiration from Mad Max movie. The first Mad Max movie tell Mad Max. The whole scene of how it plays out and how it's shot. Like a Mad Max movie. Including the last scene before his, uh, when he's trying to get this one, including the last scene when he's trying to get the revenge of, of his family after he's holding his wife in his hand, like Max, and laying her go just to get the just to get his revenge of his family, only to get blown up, but get it was a cop out because you find out he that didn't kill him. He's been alive for many years now, at least a decade now. Wow, why does this sound so familiar? It's because that same story is ripped from the first Mad Max movie. <laughs> so, look at the straight. A good cop turned bad. Yes, Punisher's not a, Punisher's a cop in this. A good guy, a good guy, a good kind of man that's a cop, by the book cop believes in the justice system turns bad by losing everything he loved that's his family and right in front of him and they get blown up half uh, blows up blows up only to re really dec a decade later he's been alive over a decade at least that's 10 years at least he's been alive for and nobody has ever done anything so he decides to take matters into his own hands doesn't this sound a lot like the plot to Mad Max? It does! That's because it is, right and really! It is, guys! You're kidding? <laughs> I kid you not. The creator of this movie, that's movie got, that's movie guess, is with a popsicle. And the puncher grilling a hamburger while pretending that he's torturing a guy just by Rupping pops go melting on his back, saying that that's his flesh. That's the most original story that we guess. Now, if you say that, well, at least the third act is original and inspiring and cool, and it really is now, then why do I feel like I've seen this from Brandon Lee's Crow in the last 15 minutes of the film? <laughs> when it gets good. In fact, 
why couldn't like the whole film take more inspiration from Bradley's Crow than Mad Max and tone down the violence? I just realized the action scenes, how this, the action scenes even tones down the violence that Max pulls to turn the, turn, ta turn the tables besides the plot stuff. And then takes out the main bad guy, like the Punisher, except when Max did it, the, the whole, did for his, in his week, it was actually cool and different. And intense at times. But when Punisher did, did it's just fine and, and hilarious. <laughs> and lighthearted, because that's what we want from the Punisher. We don't want to see people getting decapitated or getting stabbed in the skull. Shit, that, 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 that shitty people. <laughs> Because that's clearly the Punisher in the comics. We don't want to see that. <laughs> what dumbasses would want to see the Punisher from the comics that's going to that's gonna make more money and more marketable than the 2004 Punisher movie released in 2004? Oh. Now that sounds pretty dumb when I say it out loud. Wait a minute, doesn't it? Which is why the only good Punisher movie is Punisher Warzone. Because, if, he, and I am aware of the Dolph Lundgren Punisher, but my big problem is that movie that he slurs his words. Instead of announcing them properly, he, he slurs his words like he's on Nova King. Throughout the entire movie, Dolph Lundgren's Punisher from 1991. And yeah, that's, I'm gonna reveal that some other times, but that, that's, so yeah, the only good Punisher is watch Punisher Punisher. That's the only good Punisher movie is. And that's the only good adaptation live action outside of the Netflix Punisher show that lasts for two seasons. <sighs> and got cancelled. Which that was good. I know I was high on the season one of the Punisher. But I'll take all of the insults I have to the show back because Everything about that is perfectly fine of season one for the story they were telling was the Punisher of season one is the Punisher show. So all those, all those coming cons I said about the show, I take it all back. Another problem I have with this movie that, yeah, it does a good job of like making you feel bad for the puncher, but what doesn't do a good job is make you horrify of the puncher and blurring the rhymes between good and, and right. I mean, it, it doesn't do a good job of blurring the lines between bad and, and good, good like, like the comics did. With, with, it's even when the puncher's on screen. Like, the comics and puncher war zone and... The two season one of the Punisher. I haven't seen season two yet for the Netflix show that originally aired on Netflix, but now Disney Plus owns the rights to because Disney's a greedy whore. And uh, because now Netflix can't have it streaming on their server, so their subscribers went down because of it. I bet because they lost all the A games players. So. What was I? Um, Punisher, Punisher. What's wrong with the Punisher? <sighs> I was a little thirsty, okay? Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Day. I think I'm filming this now. So, Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, so, I will say I found enjoyment watching this show, this 2004 movie. But then I had to take a few steps back and wait a minute. To myself, I have to say, 
What the heck does any of this have to do with the Punisher that I know and love? Outside of the title. And the name that he gets at the third act. After he kills everybody and gets his revenge. And now he has a new purpose in life. He finds a new purpose in life. The Punisher, he calls himself. You know, I always hated this ending. Because instead of realizing that vengeance was really, instead of like having the Punisher and the Conway, like where vengeance, like having vengeance, revenge doesn't bring him peace, have the opposite of uh, outcome of, uh, of, of bringing him peace, it just brings him more misery and pain. <sighs> but in this one, 2004 Punch Me, it brings him peace and harmony and balance and bull crap. That's not true. And if it would be true, it wouldn't be that black and white. I can't imagine. So, this is what I mean, like, not even at the end. Even at the end, it doesn't bl like blur the definitely does want to blur the blur the lines between good and evil, like the comics would always the no, majority of times did a good job doing, and even Punch of Warzone and to one of the Punisher from two thousand seventeen, <sighs> tell the Punisher of that Punisher show. Even the Dolph Lundgren Punisher from nineteen ninety one did that well. <laughs> Even the Spider-Man movie from the 90s cartoon show did that well when Punisher made a brief cameo and was only in for two episodes. That was more justified and more intimidating because they got what made the Punisher cool and scary and relatable and sympathetic of a tragic character at the same time and managed to pull all these things off. Outside of the serious, like, terrifying violence, but that was because probably because it was a kid's show. And so instead of having him use actual balls, he has to use laser guns. <sighs> Even show in reality, seeing that would just cause as, mu as much uh, damage, or not more damage, <laughs> serious uh, brutal wounds. <laughs> so. So, yeah. This is the worst Punisher version, very of Punisher I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, we're calling it all of them. From cartoons, from the comics, from live action. Any Punisher variant that you have, that, that, that you, you can think of. Can you, t t can you see why I think this is the worst thing you, why this is the worst Punisher ever? Because... Outside thing, his actions doesn't don't really show that much like the Punisher or feel like anything the Punisher would do what he does uh, in terms of the tone or in terms of anything. This it feels like this is like, like this is a saying that this is the uh, Mar Marvel's Punisher and expects people to buy into it just because it has his name. And what you know what people did buy into it. A certain amount. When the film came out. All the people didn't really buy into it. Uh, actually, I seen the people that did, didn't like the movie even still bought into that, I think. But hated it because the... It's really not the same, same type of movie that was was showing. And uh, I guess I... Okay, so basically everyone bought it, even though, even though people were split on it. Some people hated it, some people loved it, some people liked it. Whatever. I was one of the people that was split on it, the movie. I, mean, I loved it, was going to love it, then, then I was, wait a minute. Am I being manipulated? I am. I said to myself, because I feel a little manipulative. Because your writing doesn't really back up and does justice to the Punisher and does justice to my inner fanboy of the Punisher. Because I actually love the Punisher for the comics and also the cartoons, you know? I always thought he was a very interesting, tragic character.
you know, really cool badass. And crazy, definitely crazy. But this movie is telling that Puncher's not crazy, but he's sane. Not unstable. The opposite. Okay. I understand they want us to root for this guy. But it feels like they're doing too much well of a job for making us root for this guy. And we're not really... It doesn't really totally click with us until the movie's after the movie's over. At least with me. That... This movie's not weird that, the, that what he, this movie's not weird that the punchers are kind of a psycho. Am I kind of mean deranged? He is completely a psycho, mostly, more or less, I guess. Uh, And he just goes on punching people and now he's found peace. And uh, that's not how the movie should have played out. Uh, I actually think the end and Corey pretty much destroys the Punisher and everything he stands for. Much like how Far From, oh, far, No Way, not Far From, No Way Home, Spider-Man No Way Home destroys everything Spider-Man was supposed to be and was in, in, from the comics and it's mean to so people and basically is about and that scene from Spider-Man No Way Home is the scene when Ame is gets killed by her stone stupidity and of being Peter's fault. It is Ame's fault. And I'm sorry, that, that completely was the point of, and at that point, like, there's no reason why you actually even have to say the line with great power because Christ's great responsibility. It just makes, uh, that, okay, what's next? You're going to wipe your ass with garlic powder? That makes as much sense. Sure, it was different, but would you or could you ever have the guts to wipe your ass with garlic powder and salt, sea salt? No? Then you have more common sense than I gave you before. Audience, so, yeah. So, yeah, 2004 Puncher, the ex extended cut and the theatrical cut, uh, both get a 0 out of 10 goodbye.